Hello, everyone. My name is Gary Baumgartner, but I expect you already know that, and I welcome you to the latest edition of the Gary Baumgartner Report on YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and, of course, to my good friends over at paltalk.com. A little salute to you folks for watching as well, because those are my live streaming roots, as many of you know. You know, we are uh, dealing right now with uh, runaway inflation. Uh, you can't turn the news on or watch the cable television without, uh, within an hour at least, uh, somebody talking about the price of gasoline, the price of food. We want the inflation to go, go, go away. But maybe you don't want what you are wishing for. My guest is Marie Sabin. He is the author of the book, Navigating the Boom Bust Cycle, an Entrepreneur's Survival Guide. And uh, Marie Sabrin, uh, welcome to uh, the Gary Baumgarten Report. Well, thank you, Gary. It's a pleasure to be with you to discuss uh, the most important domestic issue, I guess, after COVID. When there may be a relationship between the two, a cause and effect, and we're going to get into that a little bit later. But for starters, uh, we are all feeling the pinch. There's supply chain uh, issues. Uh, uh, businesses are having trouble hiring people. And we all know that... Uh, some of the things that we might have bought at the grocery store go back on the shelf if we want to maintain our budget. Uh, we may not drive as um, often or as far as we had in the past because of the cost of uh, petroleum. Uh, and uh, we all want this to come down. We want it to be mitigated somehow. But you say, watch out, because it may go from boom to bust real quickly, as your book suggests. Well, uh, this is what I've been studying for the past 50 plus years about how the economy's ups and downs affect the average person, the small businesses and um, big corporations. And so finally, I put this in a book, which I think is a, a guide that every small business owner needs to have because we go through these ups and downs and we saw what happened during the housing bust. A lot of businesses never came back. Uh, during the uh, COVID uh, downturn, a lot of businesses never came back, but that was not a typical economic recession that was basically a government lockdown that uh, crippled business because they were forced to close while big box stores were able to uh, survive and thrive online uh, commerce increased dramatically so the root cause of this again from my research uh, and i'm looking over all the different schools of thought is that the federal reserve has this enormous power to manipulate interest rates and when they manipulate interest rates, a lot of bad things happen because they flood the economy with money to depress interest rates. And that creates the unsustainable boom that we saw during the dot-com era, the housing era, and now what people have called the everything bubble era, where everything is inflated from housing to gasoline to food to clothing, you name it. Services are going up as well. So again, there's no mystery about it. It's the Fed has this enormous power called open market operations, which is just a fancy name of saying an unlimited checking account. And they, uh, that money enters the banking system and the money ripples through the economy, which was the theme of my dissertation 40 years ago at Rutgers University, where I showed how this happens as the money, new money comes into the economy and raises prices, typically in large urban metropolitan areas. And what we're seeing right now which uh, I didn't think was going to happen, is that uh, the new money is now coming into smaller cities as well. And so their price inflation is as large as or greater than some of the large urban centers. And so that's an interesting phenomenon because there's so much money in the system. The Fed created $4 trillion over the last uh, 18 months. And that money has to find a home or it has an impact on uh, entrepreneurs and consumers and manufacturers. And this is what a boom is all about. We're seeing the boom and the bust is going to happen once the Fed realizes that it's got to slow down, throttle back its money uh, expansion. And I look, I think we're going to see a recession possibly as early as uh, 2023, if not sooner, because the Fed uh, is really concerned about this inflation because they're the ones that cause it and they're the ones that can only stop it by stopping uh, the, the printing of money. And then the interest rates will, of course, correspondingly rise. Well, uh, Gary, here we are. We've got 6% inflation year over year. And what are we getting in savings accounts and money market funds and CDs? Close to 0%. So when I taught corporate finance, one of the things we teach about is interest rates and what the nominal interest rate is supposed to represent. The real rate 
plus the inflation premium. Well, the inflation premium for the last year has been 6%. So that means people who had money in the bank a year ago lost 6% of their purchasing power because they were getting zero in, the, uh, in their uh, returns. So we need a market-based interest rate, which would reflect the reality of the real rate, which historically is around 2%, and the inflation premium. So the Fed, according to one study I recently saw, caused a transfer of $4 trillion from savers to the rest of the economy, particularly Wall Street and other people that benefit from this extraordinary low interest rate. And what we're seeing is the greatest transfer of income in the history of the world. And if people want to know why income inequality has increased in the last 20 years, it's because the Fed has repressed interest rates. So senior citizens who may have $100,000, $200,000 in a savings account or a CD because they're risk averse to putting money in the stock market are getting wiped out financially because nowhere is their return uh, commensurate with the uh, rate of inflation. Now, you put a lot of this on the lap of the Fed, but this is a, a global issue, this inflation. Is it because the United States leads the pack when it comes to the world economy, or are there other factors affecting it in other countries? All central banks, Gary, want to increase the supply of money because that's their ideology. That's their way of doing business. They think it is okay to flood the economy with money because they think aggregate demand requires that money get into the hands of uh, people and they do so by by printing it uh, to use a, a, a vernacular term but um, inflation is an aberration in a free market economy as we've seen throughout american history when we didn't have money printing like we've had on the scale of, of, of the fed prices come down i can recall in the 1950s when i was a little kid and color tv entered the marketplace and it was as you know hugely expensive a thousand dollars for tv in the 1950s was comparable to about ten thousand dollars today in purchasing power and as a little kid i realized you never buy a new product first unless you want to be a first adopter but you wait until production gears up and prices come down that's what's happened with high definition tvs computer look at the price uh the price of computing today is compared to 10, 20 years ago. It's fallen by 90% or more. So this is the benefit of a free enterprise, free market economy without money manipulation. But even with the money manipulation, we've seen prices come down, which is a great boon to consumers. I'm on a laptop now, which has probably a million times computing power than my first computer 40 years ago. And I pay just about the same price today as I did uh, in, in 1984 when I got my first computer. This here, this iPhone yeah. has more commuting, com, computing power than the uh, uh, the original uh, uh, manned flights into Absolutely. space. So this, this, it's just amazing how far the te technology has gone. By the way, this is a little off topic, but to your point about uh, waiting, you also wait until they iterate out all the all the bugs on um, the stuff that's newly released, and that goes for all industries. I'm a Detroit boy. And I can tell you, because I come from an automotive family, that the, the rule at, at our house was do not buy the early model. Wait mm -hmm. until the next year because they're going to find problems with it. And the people who rush out and buy it, they're the guinea pigs, you know. So but that's that's another issue. So what happens if uh, there is no manipulation of the economy, if it becomes organic? If it gets organic, the standard of living for virtually everyone who is working rises because in, a, in that type of economy, prices would slowly come down like they did in the last half of the 19th century. If you look at the data, prices were either flat or falling in the, 19, in the late 19th, uh, 19th century, which meant that the real wages of workers, even if their wages stayed flat, their real wages increased. So those living standards increased dramatically. We saw this in the early part of the 20th century. And even though uh, we've seen inflation embedded in the economy uh, since the Federal Reserve was created, uh, we still see prices coming down in a whole host of sectors of the economy because of the great productivity and ingenuity and innovativeness of entrepreneurs. That's one, one of the things I discovered in doing the research for this book is that there are so many incredibly talented pe young people, middle-aged people who are inventing things, creating things, whether it's on the web or on uh, 
or in their basement, if you will. And that's what makes runs the economy is the great inventiveness of entrepreneurs. One of my favorite books I have is an oversized book about a history of entrepreneurship in America, of all the men and women who created these great products that we're benefiting from today. And it's going to continue. That's why Warren Buffett is right. You, you have to be optimistic about the long run trend of the economy. But short term, the Federal Reserve creates these bubbles and we pay the price with uh, rising prices, what we're seeing today, and then the inevitable bust in order to avoid uh, a runaway inflation, which we had in the 70s twice uh, with the first oil crisis and the second oil crisis. But uh, uh, the second oil crisis occurred in 79, but I wrote a piece for the New York Times in 1976 pointing that the Federal Reserve is beginning to have a, a big increase in the money supply. And we saw prices accelerate to double digits by 1979, 1980. And then Volcker came in in 79, put the brakes on, interest rates skyrocketed, and we at least got a decent rate of return on our CDs. I remember getting a 16% annual return on my money market fund in early 1981. And by 1986, the inflation rate was down below 2%. So you can do it, but it's a very painful process. And that's why I wrote the book to show entrepreneurs how they can avoid the pitfalls of a downturn and come out of it stronger than when, they, uh, when the uh, boom ended. What about those of us who are not entrepreneurs? If we are going to have this bust that you predict, and uh, you know, I know you're the economist, I'm not, but uh, I don't think you have to be uh, a uh, an expert on the economy. If you just look at previous patterns, as you point out, uh, we it goes up and down and up and down. Uh, it seems to rarely find that middle ground. Uh, so, what should if you're right that in the next year or two years, we're going to have this bust to a recession, how does the average consumer prepare for that? Well, one of the things that happens during a recession, typically happens during a recession, is prices tend to go down in some key sectors of the economy. So one way to be prepared is... Um, have build up your cash reserves during the boom. It's basically like the squirrel that puts away uh, the, their food for the, for the bad times. Uh, and this is what you got to do. When the times are good, you have to put together an emergency reserve for, for the bad times. And for the consumer, um, right now with inflation, one, thing's pe one thing people are doing is they're anticipating higher prices. So they're buying in bulk today of non-perishable items, because if something is going to go up a 10 percent a year from now or a year from now and you buy it today, you just return 10 percent on your money by buying whatever you think may go up 10 percent next year or 5 percent. That's better than zero percent in the bank. So people are maybe anticipating inflation and then you may get a run on, on uh, some products in the marketplace that uh, consumers feel, hey, I, I think price is going to go up. Therefore, I'm going to make my purchases today. Just as people buy stocks in anticipation of a company earnings in the future, people anticipate higher prices and they'll make their buying decisions today, whether it's a car or a house. But the housing market will be tricky, as you know, Gary, because we saw housing prices don't go straight up, they can come down pretty hard when you have a housing bust. And we may have a housing bust because prices in the last year in some areas have gone up 30, 40%, which is really unsustainable because that well, where is- I live, Where I live, they've, uh, people are offering, they're knocking on the door, they're leaving leaflets uh, sight unseen. They wanna buy my abode, you know? And it's, it's because uh, they're selling like hotcakes. I know. The, 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 so you have a demographic trend going on. People want to get out of the cities. They want to buy something in the suburbs or where I am in Florida. People are moving down. We're seeing license plates from all over the country in our development. People are moving to where the economy is stronger, where they don't have the restrictions that you do have in other states regarding uh, the COVID uh, situation. And so uh, and there's opportunities. Florida is, is an open state. And uh, so are other states that are benefiting from uh, not only people who are tired of the cold weather, which I was, one of the reasons we moved to Florida because I really was sick and tired of all the cold weather up, up in uh, New Jersey. And uh, of course, there's no state income tax. Now, how can you beat that when um, in, in New Jersey, in California, Illinois, New York State, you've got a very high state income tax. So that really puts a crimp on your retirement income when you have to pay taxes uh, on income that uh, uh, could help you tide over these bad times. So uh, again, I, I've been following this for um, a long time and uh, the bust is coming. Uh, there are some key indicators that, that my book describes, like the inverted yield curve, the unemployment rate, 
uh, housing starts, housing sales. These are all um, information that I have in the book. And then you can go to the Federal Reserve website, which I give uh, links to, where you can see how these uh, uh, data sets unfold and you can see how they correlate with the beginning of the recession, the end of the boom. And uh, you can try to anticipate this. But I think the best indicator is the yield curve. And so if the Fed starts raising interest rates aggressively, that yield curve is going to invert, which means short term rates go above long term rates. And when that happens, it's six months to a year before the recession starts. You know, you talk about the income tax. You and I live in New Jersey. Uh, you move from the highest tax state to one of the lowest tax states. Uh, you know, here I hate to uh, to even uh, do this, but here's the assessment. I'll just flash it for a second on on my on my house. My taxes are going up again, and so uh, you you did a you know economically you made a very good move. Forget about the fact that the uh, it's cold here and warm there. Uh, that that in itself uh, makes it appealing to move down to Florida. But uh, there are a lot of folks. I'm sure you see Jersey plates uh, in your development as well. So I said in the beginning that I would uh, circle back, as uh, Jen Saki likes to say, I talk about. <laughs> and talk about how the uh, COVID is affecting the economy. And now we have this uh, this new variant that was discovered in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, we're not exactly sure what that's going to lead to. But even before that, they were talking about uh, surges of Delta over the winter. Um, we know that it adversely affected the economy before. What do you think this is going to do uh, in the short term, this pandemic? Well, what happened last year, Gary, is very simple. The yield curve inverted at the end of 2019, which indicated that a recession was going to follow possibly in 2020, which would have been really poor for Trump's re-election chances, because when you have a, a recession in an ele a presidential election year, the incumbent, is, I think, is always defeated. So having said that, be, then COVID entered the picture in February, March. The economy imploded, not because of the inverted yield curve, but because the, of, of the lockdowns. And then the federal government spent a ton of money to bail just about everyone out. The Federal Reserve came in and bought up a lot of the debt because the federal government was running huge deficits. They flooded the economy with money and they postponed the recession that was going to be in, begin in 2020 or early 2021. So here we are a year and a half later, and we've got this incredible uh, boom going on in a lot of sectors of the economy. And so the Fed, seeing that the inflation is rising, which was predictable last year because the money supply increased by more than 25 percent, unprecedented, I think, in American history. And so that money is now diffusing, spreading through the economy, raising prices. It has nothing to do with the supply chain per se. The supply chain prices are not increases are not inflation. Inflation is caused by a very specific phenomenon. It's the money printing by the Federal Reserve and other central banks. The supply chain disruptions are, is just another layer of the price equation that's going on in the country. So to untangle the Fed's inflation effect on prices and the supply chain is, is kind of difficult because you really have to know where the money flows are to figure out what's causing the prices to rise. And so, again, if the yield curve inverts in 2022, then the countdown begins to the next uh, bust, which could happen in late 2022 or but definitely in 2023. Well, it's good to know uh, what's coming, even if the what's coming is bad news. So be careful, folks, what you wish for as you complain about our inflationary spiral, because what's to come, depending on your income. And if you're on a fixed income, I feel for you because uh, it's it, you, you get hurt on a fixed income, whether it's an inflationary spiral or a recessionary spiral. Either way, you get screwed, don't you? Well, th this is why it's so difficult for the average person to navigate and for the small business owner who may not be aware of what are the macroeconomic phenomena that are occurring. And so I wrote the book specifically for the small business owner, but it's also applicable to CEOs and CFOs of medium and large corporations that are either publicly listed or private because they too have to make decisions about do they expand now because things are looking good and boom, they may be expanding just at the wrong time, just as the housing uh, companies, uh, the real estate companies started buying up land or options on land during the housing bubble. And guess what? Their stocks fell 80, 90% because of the housing bust. And so you've got to be really attuned to the ups and downs of the economy. And uh, it's very tempting to 
go all in during a boom because you think the boom is never going to end. But then when you make that decision and the bust occurs, then you're left holding the bag, so to speak. And then that's when a, a thriving, successful business can go under very easily. Well, every uh, small business owner who I know, and I know a few, um, and they tend to be nervous anyway because their margins are not sure. necessarily very great. Uh, so there's not a lot of room for error. Uh, after the pandemic, what they went through with the pandemic, and now they're just reopening and welcoming people back in uh, large numbers, not, by the way, to the degree that they uh, welcomed folks in before for uh, varying reasons, uh, which we won't have time to get into right now because we're wrapping up. Uh, but uh, they are very concerned about uh, how the economy is going to go, and not just with regard to a potential recession, but in the short term, with uh, the COVID, they're very, very concerned whether they're going to be able they, a lot of them say, if we go into another lockdown, we will not survive. Absolutely. And the thing that I, I uncovered when I was doing this book is that a lot of not, not a lot businesses that I, I came across that readjusted their business model during COVID and they made it through because they went from selling furniture in store to selling furniture online. A, bike, a bicycle shop went from selling bicycles to repairing bicycles. There are so many examples of people being creative and uh, using their knowledge of business and their marketplace to, to meet consumer needs uh, during the, the COVID situation. And I suspect that will continue. But as you point out, a lot of businesses will go under if there's another lockdown. And hopefully the powers that be in Washington and state capitals will realize that a, uh, this would be a huge blow to the small business community. And I think uh, people will either resist or, or try to uh, avoid having another lockdown because it, it could be devastating to Main Street uh, USA. It may be from a public health standpoint, depending on what is in our future, the right thing to do. But I don't think there's an appetite for it. So uh, but time will tell on all that, too. I'm Marie Saber. And the name of the book is Navigating the Boom bust cycle an entrepreneur's survival guide there it is folks uh you can get it at amazon or at, at any number of places google your name and i think the book comes up well if you go to my blog uh there's a flyer there the uh, publisher is offering a 20 percent discount it's a black friday every day with the publisher business experts press and you uh, uh, put in the code to order it on the business experts press website boom 20 and you get a 20 percent discount on the soft cover and the ebook See, always with the economic advice, Marie. Always yep. with the economic it's, it's, it's advice. Marketing 101. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, enjoy your warmth as I get prepared to go out into our cold. And uh, folks, thank you for uh, watching and listening. And until the next time uh, we get together, peace out.